So we were talking about correcting myopia. So the idea with myopia is, as you remember, that the eye is a little too long. So when uh, the, the um, crystalline is relaxed, the image of an object or a far away object is not formed on the retina, right? So if you have an object that is really far away, so those light rays in a normal eye, which has this shape, those light rays will be focused on the retina, which will be over here. But for a person with myopia, the eyeball is a little too long. Therefore, uh, an object at infinity gets an image form here, which is not where the, where the retina is. So therefore, you get an, an image that is blurry because the light rays are not coinciding at one point there. The object, the furthest distance that you can have the object from your eye, it's called the far point, and that far point is not infinity. Suppose that this is the far point, so the light rays coming from an object at the far point of the myopic eye will be focused on the retina. At this point, we're looking at the um, crystalline lens fully relaxed, so there's no accommodation. And uh, we're doing that because if it was not relaxed, that is, if there was some accommodation going on, that means if it was squeezed by the, muscle, the ciliary muscles, then the focal length of the lens would be shorter, which means that this image would move this way. If the F gets smaller, then this point moves that way. So that would make things worse, right? So accommodation doesn't help, and you simply cannot focus on an object that is further away than your far point, which is some distance, whatever it is. For me, it would be 30 centimeters or something like that. Uh, anywhere here, those light rays do not get focused here. There's a positive thing about having myopia, and that is that you see better than normal. Objects that are close to you, you see them better than normal. Because this is the normal point, the near point, which is 25 centimeters. <coughs> for an object, uh, for a person with myopia, uh, you can focus on objects that are closer than that distance. The light rays coming from that object, which would normally miss the retina of a normal eye, because uh, they, they would be focused behind a normal retina. Since the myopic uh, eyeball has a retina further back, they can be focused on the retina. Being able to focus on an object that is closer to you means that you can see more details of that object. All right? So if you are uh, ever trying to figure out something that is written in very small print or something like that and you have myopia, take off your glasses, take off your, um, your contact lenses because you'll be able to see uh, much better. So this line over here shows you the normal range for uh, a vision for a person, for a normal person would be uh, between infinity and 25 centimeters, which is the uh, near point for a normal person. For a person with myopia, as we already discussed, this is too far and there is a maximum distance, which we call the far point, somewhere here, but that comes always together with an ability to focus objects that are closer than 25. So how do you correct for that? Well, remember that what the real problem is that you cannot see objects that are further away than the uh, far point, and that far point is not infinity, so that is the problem. So what you want to do is, if you place an object at infinity, then uh, if, you, if you have an object over there, we know that the eye by itself cannot focus those light rays, right? So what you want to do is make those eye ray, uh, light rays, by placing a lens here, you want to make those light rays seem to be coming from your far point, right? Light rays that are diverging in this specific way, they can get focused on the retina. So if you were able to make these light rays that are coming in parallel look like they're coming from here, so that they have that angle, the same angle over there and here, then they will get focused by the eye, no problem. So what kind of lens can take an object that is at infinity, sending parallel light rays, and produce an image that is uh, over here. That has to be a diverging lens, right? First of all. And second, the focal length of the diverging lens must match the far point of the person. Right? Because parallel light rays seem to be coming from one point and that has to be the focal length 
of uh, the divergent lens that you're using, and that point needs to be equal to the far point of the eye. <coughs> so what we're saying basically is that the focal length, to correct for myopia, you need a lens that has a focal length that is, uh, it's going to be a divergent lens, so it's going to have a minus sign, and the focal length should match exactly the far point of the person. Okay, so as I mentioned before, when you go to the eye doctor's uh, office, what they ask you is remove your glasses. If you have any, look at the letters. If the lowest letter, uh, line of letters that you can read, that tells the doctor what is your far point. And knowing the far point, it is straightforward to determine what is the diopters that you need. Because the uh, diopters are defined as one over the far point. That's called the uh, power of the lens. And uh, so that's the equation that you would use. So if your far point is 30 centimeters, like mine, you want to use, oh, sorry, this should say meters, not centimeters. It should be in meters. So 30 centimeters is 0 0.3 meters. One over 0 0.3 gives you 3.3. Now let's talk about the uh, other problem that, uh, a typical problem in the eyes that uh, people have, which is hyperopia. So it's just the opposite of myopia. And the problem is that the eyeball is a little shorter than it should be. Okay, so the normal uh, size of the eyeball will be something like this. So the retina will be this distance uh, behind the crystalline lens. But for a hyperopic eye, that is closer. So if you have an object at infinity, <coughs> the light rays of that object, with a relaxed crystalline that is, they would form on a normal light, they would form on the retina. Normal eye can see objects at infinity. But they don't cross or they don't uh, focus on the retina of the hyperopic eye, so therefore it looks blurry at this point. But that's not the end of the story because if the person uh, can accommodate, if the person can squeeze that crystalline lens, shortening the, wave, the focal length of it, then this point is going to move back. Right? So if you squeeze the crystalline lens, you shorten the focal length of it and that point is going to move forward and it's going to intersect the retina and that will be, you will be able to see clearly the object. So an object placed at infinity for a hyperopic eye can be seen clearly. You can focus on that. The only problem of course is that your crystalline lens is already squeezed where it should be relaxed, right? To focus an object at infinity, you're already having to work the, your eye to see an object at infinity. So part of the range that the crystalline lens can cover, you're already using it to focus on infinity. So that means that you're going to come up short on the other side. That is, when the object gets close to you, you're not going to have enough room to accommodate for that because you already used part of the room that you have, the accommodation that you could have, you're already using it for an object placed at infinity. So as the object gets closer and closer to you, starting at infinity, the crystalline lens get, uh, has to accommodate, so it gets compressed a little bit and you get the image form on the retina. As you start getting the object closer and closer, the crystalline lens, the image of the object, it's going to uh, form behind the retina, so the crystalline lens squeeze, gets squeezed a little bit more, so the image moves back on the retina. You keep moving this object and the crystalline lens has to squeeze a little bit more. Right? But then, of course, there's going to be a point where the crystalline lens cannot be squeezed anymore. So that means that your near point is not going to be the normal 25 centimeters. The near point is going to be something bigger than 25 centimeters. Okay? At this point, where the object is at this distance from your eye, you're already using your maximum accommodation possible for the crystalline lens. And you got it just barely to focus here. If you bring it a little closer, that point moves back and you don't have any more room here to adjust. So a hyperopic person has a near point that is bigger than 25. can see all the way to infinity, but closer things, that's where the problem is. So how do you want to, uh, how would you correct for this? <coughs> you want to be able to see objects that are uh, 25 centimeters from you to still have normal vision, right? So if you place an object here, the lens that would help you with that problem is a lens that would take an object here and produce an image at the uh, near point of your eye. 
Right? Remember that if you put an object here, you can focus that, but barely. That's the limit. So if you place an object even uh, closer than that, this lens, if you were able to produce an image here, then your eye will be able to focus that. So that's the job that you want this lens to do for you. Right? To move, to have an object here, and have a, this, an image of that object that is behind the object. So remember that, uh, contrast that with the uh, myopia case. In the myopia case, you want to have an object that is way away and you want to bring it closer to you, right? So you can see it clearly. For the hyperopia case, you want to have a, uh, an object that, it, uh, that is close to you and you want to move it further back because you cannot see that close, things that are that close, all right? So if that's what you want to do, <coughs> then the focal length of the lens that you want that to do uh, first of all, it should be a converging lens. You want to have an image of the object that is upright and it should be behind the object. If it was a diverging lens, where would the image of this object be? It would be over here. That would make things worse, right? You could not possibly focus on an object that is even closer than 25. You can't even focus 25. So you have to use it a converging lens. And the converging lens is acting sort of like a magnifying glass, and it pushing it pushes the image back to the place where you can focus it. So that's going to be a positive uh, focal length, and the object placed at the near point of a normal person uh, will have a distance to the lens of 0.25, and. Uh, the distance, you want the image of that object to be formed at a distance that is equal to the near point of the hyperopic eye. And that's going to be on the left, the upstream side of images. So that goes with a minus sign. So from here you solve for the uh, equation. One over the focal length that you need, called the diopters of the lens that you're going to use to correct for that. So the diopters will be 1 over 0.24 is 4. Uh, minus one over the near point for that person. So notice that the range for the diopters of a hyperopic eye goes all the way from zero to four. Right? If the person has a, no, a near point that is normal, then this will be four, four minus four, that will be zero. So a normal person is here. The uh, worst case scenario will be when your near point is actually at infinity. That means the person cannot focus anything. Right? So that would be the worst case scenario, when the near point is actually uh, way over there at infinity. So that would be 4. So this would be sort of blindness. <coughs> I mean, you see the light and everything, but you just can't focus. 